We'd like to thank Montecito Bank and Trust for their generous support in making Scam Squad possible. I'm Patty Teal. And I'm Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson. Scam Squad is up next. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Scam Squad. Welcome to Scam Squad. I'm your host, Patty Teal, here as always with Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson and our special partners from Montecito Bank and Trust. And Vicki, as always, I'm going to let you do the introduction. Okay, thank you, Patty. Nice to be here and nice to welcome once again Doris Roof, Senior Fraud Specialist from Montecito Bank and Trust. And um, Doris, good to, good to have you back. And I understand you have a story for us today about a customer who was trying to do a transaction with Venmo and things kind of went awry. And tell us what happened, please. Hi, sure. Thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, what had happened is um, a customer had called into us and stating, you know, that she had an issue and realized that that she was scammed. She had stated that she had tried to transfer some money over to her son. And when she attempted to do that, she was declined. Now, I'm not sure exactly why she was declined initially by Venmo, but in having that decline and her son needing that money, she looked up the phone number for Venmo in hopes that she could resolve it right away and then continue with sending the money. Well, when she went to go search for the Venmo phone number, uh, what popped up was actually a fraudulent Venmo site. And the phone number that popped up was an 828 number. And to me, that should be one of the signals when you are looking up uh, a company of some sort and trying to call in. Generally, they will be an 800 number or like an 855 number. So you, that is like one sign first right off the bat to look for. But what happened is she continued, she called that number of the 828 and she spoke to what she states as a James Ryan. And of course, they're going to use all different kinds of names. That's just a name that she was told. They told her that there was an issue with her IP address and that's why the Venmo transaction was declined. She said, okay, and you know, how can I get this fixed? And they asked to be remoted in. When they remoted in, they were on the phone for about two hours. The, the scammers are trying to get as much information about that individual as they can and also stay on their computer as long as they can so that they can see you know, what else is stored on the computer, you know, tax returns, whatever. He remoted in. He told her that he had cleaned it. Uh, he, he had cleaned up her computer about 60% of it, but he still needed to continue. And it continued for two hours. And what she found was they did take about $2,000 from her account. They transferred it from a not our bank account, but another bank account that she had uh, linked to a money transfer, and they transferred about $2,000 out of her account. That she contacted the other bank, closed their account, and but she wanted to make sure that there was nothing on our side and what she needed to do. We're not sure exactly how the scammers are doing it, but they set up these fraudulent accounts either for like Venmo or let's say PayPal, uh, anything to get you to contact that phone number that they have that they have on this fraudulent site that looks like a legitimate site. So a customer is thinking they're contacting Venmo when really they're not. And they pop up first. The scammer's information for the fraudulent Venmo always seems to appear first instead of the legitimate Venmo site. So my suggestion, one, look for an 800 or an 855 number. And also, when you click on that, look to see if it's a secure site, an HTTPS, just to make sure that you're really logging into a Venmo site. Venmo, to me, would never ask to remote into your computer. You know, there's no need for them. They have all that information on their side. 
and they should be able to tell from on their side what the issue was as far as why you're being declined. So uh, basically, no one really will ask to remote in. And that's kind of the bottom line anymore for anything. If they're asking to get into your computer because they're going to help you fix it, they're not. They're going to make it worse. That's really important advice. And we've had this come up before with other folks. Now, I want to ask, how did she how did she find this number? Did she Google it? Did she Google it? And this was yes. the first night? Okay. Our guest shared the same thing last week. She thought it was Microsoft Office, I believe. Yep. And, uh, you know, she was very tech savvy, but she called a phony number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these scammers get their numbers at the top of all of the listings. Somehow yep. they are able to get up there, maybe the first one, two or three. And so mm -hmm. you don't realize that you're talking to a scammer. You think you've actually reach the real company. But I I love this advice. First of all, be suspicious of any site that pops up first. That's number one. Look for the 800 or the 855 phone number. That's something I would not have known to do. That's very good advice. And you said the fraudulent phone number was an 828 number, which immediately made you suspicious. Uh, next, see if it's H HTTPS, which means that it is a secure site, which is what a company like Venmo would use. And I think this is great advice. Venmo or any other legitimate company is never going to ask you to remote never. in. Yeah. I no. mean, I can't think of any site unless you are physically taking your computer in or something and you're at that location and they're saying, all right, let's fix your computer and let's see what kind of malicious malware you have on there, I whatever. Have, I have but let people no remote in but, because I do a lot of audio. So I've had some audio okay. interface problem. It's not working correctly. You know, why is this not working? But mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure by the time I let them remote in, we've tried all these things and I'm pretty sure I'm talking to a legitimate company. But of course you have to be right. so very careful. Right. And, yeah. you know, even at the bank, you know, we use one company that helps us fix, let's say I'm having an issue with my email that day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've I've got that number in my phone to know who I should be contacting. And they're the, we're not going to let anybody else remote in. And sure. basically, like you said, Patty, it's very rare. If you're going to have rare. somebody mm -hmm. ro remote in, it's so rare that they're yes. going to want to get into your computer. Well, I, I think it was also interesting, the point that you made about them keeping you on for hours, because we hear this story over and over. Oh, my gosh, I was on the phone for several hours while they were trying to fix things. And of course, you make the point that really what they're doing is trying to mine whatever information right. they can get off of your computer during that period of time, whether it's your bank accounts or your credit card information or your retirement accounts, whatever you have on there, yeah. that's what they're trying to figure out how to access. And yeah. so you know, they want to keep you on as long as possible, get as much information about you as possible. Maybe they so they can uncover your um, your, your passwords or whatever mm -hmm. it is they're looking for to get into the account. Mm -hmm. So be suspicious if you do let somebody remote in and they just won't let you off. I mean, that seems oh. to be another warning sign. Um, yeah. yeah. And I can tell you, they're a lot more tech savvy than most of us. They 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 know what they're doing. And, they do. Um, yeah. yeah. They 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 want to stay on and like you said mine for as much information as they can find on your computer. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of people do store quite a bit of information on their desktop, you know, because they want, you know, when you're on your computer, you want easy access. And after being on the phone with somebody for so long, you're probably chatting and you start to trust yeah. them. They're working so hard to exactly. help me. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah, they I, I work just, on many different levels. These yes. I mean, they're good psychologists. These mm -hmm. people they yep. really, really are. They know how yep. to manipulate people. Yeah. Yep. And 
And I do want to bring one other um, topic up real quickly, especially with this holiday season right now coming up. And it's going to be busy in the stores. Lots of people are going to be out, especially uh, since the past couple of years, we haven't been able to enjoy the holidays as much with the pandemic and everything. So people are going to be out and about. And um, I can tell you that one of our customers reported to us, and this was local, they were in a store and somebody had asked for, it was an older person, this was an elderly woman that asked for help. And while the pers- our customer helped this older woman, her wallet was stolen. They took her wallet out and immediately went to town um, and charging up all kinds of charges, including like $7,000 on a uh, department store. And uh, not only that, it's her ID. So ID theft comes into it and it's just not what you want during the holidays or any time. But especially so it was, during am the I understanding you that was the older lady who was part of the scam? Yeah. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so and we a lot all of trust the want to help. Yes, yeah, so we uh-huh. do. <laughs> yeah, Again, we want to help. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you know, you might be a little hesitant with maybe I hate to say this with a younger person, but generally with an older, you feel like you're trusting sure. them. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Was this a? Yeah. Um, a grocery store or a market or was this a retail shop? Um, it was a retail shop. So they were shopping probably for Christmas, sure. um, possibly for, you know, presents, whatever. And they probably needed something higher up. And while she was reaching, I, I'm assuming, you know, yeah. this is just uh, what I'm guessing happened. Um, went to go help and reach for something high. And of course, you're focused on you know, what you're trying sure. to get mm-hmm. and somebody else from behind takes the wallet right out of the purse, wow. which you probably have right there in that child seat on the cart, you know. Absolutely. Well, this is interesting so. because our old friend Dayton, who is on the show very occasionally, he also reported to me that this has had happened recently in one of the grocery stores in town. Mm-hmm. You know, again, the purse is open uh, in the in the cart uh, in the car seat where the the child usually is is positioned. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she got distracted, and lo and behold, somebody lifted the wallet right out of the purse, and uh, right off there. they went. And within literally ten minutes, they were mm-hmm. using one of her cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. so there yep. was seven thousand dollars they were able to use. Yeah. And she went, and this, like you said, this was just in a few minutes and that, because she, when she went to go pay for her purchase, that's when she realized she didn't have the wallet yeah. and they already had gone to town either online or, um, you know, local, well, some of the charges were right across the street at another retail store and they were quite substantial. And then, uh, uh you know, $7,000 on another type of credit card. Yeah. yeah, I have a question for you, Doris. I, we've often said that credit cards are safer than debit cards, but, you know, you can use your debit card like a credit card where you don't have to put the um, the code in or the password. So are you protected at all if you get uh, somebody steals the, your debit card? And you you are protected. Yeah. The debit okay. card falls under what's considered regulation E and, and the E stands for electronic. So okay. any type of uh, electronic transaction. It's just credit cards are more protected under MasterCard. Okay. So they've got some of those MasterCard rules or Visa, I, I should mm-hmm. also say. It's just we use MasterCard um, here. Um, but, yeah, MasterCard or Visa rules. So there's more. There's a different set of protections under okay. credit cards versus. But debit cards, you know, to be honest with you, I'd say a good, if you've got your debit card stolen, like in this case, they did use uh, like over a thousand dollars on the debit card um, mm-hmm. because, it, but you have a limit of how much you can purchase also on a debit card. But it, so it was close to the limit, but they would be protected. So yeah, just like wow. with any, I, I'm not sure what her limit was on the credit card. Yeah, for the I day, didn't but realize. Obviously, I, it must yeah. have been substantial. 
I thought a debit card you could use as much as was available on your card. No, I know oh. you, you're you're limited to how much you can take out per day. And well, yeah, as as day. cash, but using it, as, you know, at a checkout. Also, is also for purchases, oh, there's okay. a limit. It's much higher than mm-hmm. taking out cash, but there is a limit, and it's based on what the bank determines. I see. They feel comfortable to do their business with. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. While, while we're on the subject of, of giving warnings, I was planning to bring this up today, too. Um, we're all familiar, I'm sure, with the major cryptocurrency exchange failure or fraud, however you want to describe it, which wiped out, completely wiped out many crypto investors. I mean, people lost fortunes in this particular um, incident. And of course, we've talked about how scammers follow the headlines. So guess what? Because so many people have lost money in a cryptocurrency scam or what Ponzi scheme or whatever it was, scammers are now out there offering recovery services to people oh, who have lost money. Oh, yes. gosh. <laughs> it always follows. It always follows. They just swoop in, don't they? they? They swoop in before you can even think straight about it. And so they'll impersonate the government or a company or some other organization saying that they can help you recover all of that money. And they've got lots of stories to convince you that they can actually do that. But first, of course, they'll tell you that you have to pay them a fee or else give them your financial information so that they can put those lost funds right back into your account. Mm -hmm. But in in either event, your money will be gone. So the um, warnings are don't pay anyone who contacts you offering to recover money that you lost to a scam. Nobody legitimate is going to do that. And of course, if they ask for a fee, that is our huge red flag. And if you're at all tempted, Google the company and pair it with the word complaint, scam, or review and see what people say. And then finally, If scammers tell you to pay, we've said this a thousand times before, if scammers tell you to pay by gift card, cryptocurrency, or wire transfer, be sure that it is a scam. So I I feel terribly sorry for people that lost money in this cryptocurrency failure, but if somebody contacts you, and even if they pretend to be from the government and tells you that they can recover your money, they cannot. It is a scam. So... There you go. And this was from the Federal Trade Commission, just hot off the presses. Well, thank you, Vicki. That's very interesting. And how quick they seize the moment of the crypto, you know, taking a tank, that they're right there to tank it a little bit more. Exactly. (laughs) All right. So, Doris, do you have anything else for us today? Or will that be, is that it? Yeah, well, that was really good. for today. Okay. It sure Uh, was. I, I do have some good news, right. and so I can share that now if you wish. Uh, recently, two California men were sentenced to up to 11 years for money laundering in aid of a multi-million dollar conspiracy committed by, guess who, Nigerian nationals, which, as I've said many times before, this is where a lot of the scams originated. So these scams included business email compromise, romance scams, that's a big Nigerian favorite, Um, installing malware for identity theft and numerous other things. And the money was transferred to Nigeria, to the crooks in Nigeria through fraudulent bank accounts, cryptocurrency, Western Union, once again, our old favorite, and MoneyGram. Uh, And in all, these money launderers laundered about $6 million, but they were just a small part of this conspiracy. They were the two that were living here in the United States and helping out these crooks. 80 defendants, 8-0 defendants have been charged, and some were actually arrested and picked up in Nigeria. So once again, my message to you is, If you've been scammed, please take that time and report it to the FBI, www.ic3.gov, or the Federal Trade Commission, ftc.gov, because sometimes, with a lot of help, these scammers do get caught and prosecuted. 
So Patty, that's my message for today. Well, that is a wonderful message, Vicki. It always brings a smile to my face when we have some good news at the end. Yeah. <laughs> and would you give the fraud hotline for people? Of course, area code 805-568-2442. And again, that's area code 805-568-2442. And if you want to watch past episodes or listen to past episodes, we're on pretty much all the podcast sites and you can go to our YouTube channel called Scam Squad. Be sure to subscribe. And if you have questions, we might start answering them on, on the air. That would be great. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Good idea. Thanks, everybody. Take care now. Thank you. And happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.